Guys, welcome back. This will be a really quick tutorial because I think it's really simple and really easy. So bear with me. If you wanna if you wanna have lava in your game, then you can just use this material that I make here. So I got this comment, um, and this guy was uh interested about how to uh pan the word line normals, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. So if you hop into the game right here and we wait for the controls uh here then you can see we have a pretty nice um, lava material here. I do not really recommend to use this if your game is based on lava and, and uh, things like this because it's not that high quality. It's just a quick as tutorial and you can just place it in the background. If you have like a lava pool in the background or like a lava river in the background, then I think it's more than enough. So let's uh, jump into it. Let's just hop into it. So how we can make this material is actually pretty simple. Let me open up my material here. This is it. This is all. It's really, really, really simple. So if you if you look at lava, I think it's pretty obvious that it has two parts. What you want to do is we want to pan everything that is not the molten uh, the molten rock part. So what we want to do here is we want to have uh, a noise texture, and I'm going to show you the settings here in a, in a, in a second. So this noise texture will be the lava and the molten rocks. So everything that is white is going to be the molten rocks and everything that is black is going to be the flowing lava. So that's that. I use 0 0.01 scale. Um, I use the simple texture based um, noise texture. I use turbulence, I have levels at 10. So you have this noise, noise texture that is going to separate the molten rocks from the lava. What we can do next is actually make the rock texture here. What I did is I actually downloaded a surface from uh, Megascam um, that is this uh, Ripple lava um, texture here, and I use these 3D textures. So, like the other tutorial we had, we have a word aligned uh, texture, we have word aligned normal, and we have word aligned separate channels. If you don't know how to do this because you didn't see the, the uh, other tutorial, you have this texture sample that you can't connect to the separate channels or the, the word aligned texture. So, you just right click and convert to a texture object, and then we can um, uh, plug it in like that. So you, you plug everything in um, and you use a tiling, like a, and you use a parameter for tiling. The default is 64 by 64 and it's really, really dense. So you just plug these into the texture sizes, every single te texture size, and you plug the texture object to the texture object. Now what we want to do is we want to use the XYZ texture um, as a B channel in a lerp node. And then we want to just connect um, every single alpha Every, uh, the, this noise texture to every single alpha here. So now if you were to plug this in, what we did so far, then you would see this. Now we have molten rocks here in the middle, and then for everything that is black here, we want lava flowing so really slowly and, uh, and glowing like emitting light. So now for that, we create these two little parameters here that is just a three vector. And now you can you can see the hex colors here if you want to use these exact same hex colors, but you can just tweak it for yourself. Now we plug this into the A channel here. So everything that is in the A channel is going to be the lava channel. And we're going to lerp this too with another noise texture that is going to move and pan over time. So we have a little bit of variation here and we can sell the effect that the lava is actually flowing. So, how can we do that? We create another noise texture, and then I set the scale to a really low number. And everything else is default, I think. Now we get an absolute word position, like that. We come out from the three vector here, but the panner is a two vector node, so we have to separate the um, green and the blue channel here. So we're just going to mask the green and the blue, and we're going to mask the remaining R. So now we split the three vector to two vector. Then we connect it to a panner node here. And then we are going to add it back at the end. So now we have three vector again because the notion is going to want to use uh, the three vector again. So it's a little tricky, but just do this uh, little separation and then pen the two um, coordinates here, the X and Y and then append it back together. So now with this, we can just add the simple time 
which is just, just a time node. And also we want to multiply it with a number so we can slow it down or speed it up. So we have a little control over the time here. And then basically what's left is just giving the X and Y coordinates um, some value. And you see I have minus X and, and positive Y. It's basically where the lava, where, what direction the lava wants to flow. Totally depend on your project. For me, minus X and positive Y was the go-to. And then this is basically the alpha between these two channels, uh, between these two colors here in the lava. So what we had that have here is this nice separation of these two colors that is going to move over time. So now with this little change here, as you can see, we have flowing lava here. And it also gives you a fake perception of depth, which is really nice. Um, and it's because we used a cheap um, contrast here with the noises. Um, I'm not really sure if you want to use a cheap uh, cheap uh, uh, contrast here. I usually use one because I think it adds a little. But you can actually just delete this node if you don't want it or you don't like the effect it gives you. So now what we have here is... A flowing lava part and we want to make it emissive. So how can we make it emissive is again really simple. We want to say, we want to tell this little material that everything that is uh, molten lava rocks here, we don't want it to be emissive, so that's color black. And everything that is a flowing lava here, so everything that was white in the other uh, noise texture, the other alpha map, we want them to be uh, emissive. So we use the mask what we created for the molten lava, and then we uh, connect it to a lerp node with a B that is a molten lava channel, um, the rocks channel. Sorry, the molten rocks channel that is going to be black because we don't want it to be emissive, and then basically we just want um, this moving texture. Let me just clean clean this up here, so it's not really confusing. We wanted the texture we just created for the base color to be the A channel, so. Now we know where to be emissive and where not to be emissive. And also we have two different emissive strengths. So if you open this up, you can see this, this value is like halfway and this value is all the way at the top. So these colors will be less emissive and these colors will be more emissive. So it, it gives a nice variation to the texture. So now we just multiply it with a parameter that is going to be basically the strength. I use it at 10. I tried one which was nice, but I think it lacked, it lacked the power. So I just bumped it up to 10. Um, so as you can see now, if I put it too late, it's really nice and glowy. If I put it on uh, to 1, it's still nice. It gives a different, a totally different vibe. But um, I think I like it on 10. But again, it's, it's all on you and your project from here. And now a little bit extra here is actually the ripples from the lava. Um, we can use the same uh, normal map as the molten rocks here. And we can pen this normal map, but you can use like water normals or anything else. Or if you have like water uh, lava normals, then you can use that as well. So what we want to do here is we want to create another penner node and a texture coordinate. So we want to get another panel node and we use way, 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 way smaller numbers here. So if you can see, I used minus three and plus three. Now I use minus 0 0.01 and minus 0 0.01 uh, again, yes. So we basically just want this panel here connected. And then we want to use the same time and speed that we use for the, um, the flowing effect. So we just plug it in here to the time. So now we have, basically we have one control for two different things, um, but they're doing the same thing, so it's fine. <clears throat> and now we just want to connect the, norm, uh, the normal map to the normal map channel, which is, it's really, um, yeah, there. It's really, it's a mess right now. But you can just place down these reroute nodes and um, clean it up a little. So now we have a mission, we have base color. What we want to do is we want to have normals here. So we connect the normals. Uh, what are you? That's base color. What are you? So we want to have this to the roughness. 
I believe, because now we want this to be the ambient occlusion and we want this to be the roughness. Um, now, I wouldn't recommend you have anything else than one here, or you actually want to connect ambient occlusion to the, mod the, the flowing lava, which is basically not going to do anything because we have it set to emissive. So you just use one and you just use one for the roughness as well because lava is not really reflective. So, but if you feel better, you can just create um, a full white texture and just connect it here. It's going to, it's going to do the same thing. And if you want to use textures for the lava and not noise, um, noise nodes, then let's say, let's say this is your lava material, which is still word lined then what you can do is on the texture size, uh, I think you can get um, an absolute word position here like that and the panner node, just how we did it here. And then you can basically just put this into the word position. Um, word space, word position, and word position, vector three, like that. And now we want to have the same setting here for the time. And if I press, press play, then as you can see, we can pan the molten rock texture here as well. So if you have a borderline texture for the lava as well, then you can just basically use the same thing as we did before, but just connect it to the, to the uh, word position vector tree. So you just have to use this same thing here. So now we have a material that you can extend. It's going to be really nice. It's not really going to be repetitive. And also you have this flowing thing here. But I don't really like it, so I'm just going to delete this part. Okay, so basically that's it. Now you can just create a post-processing um, volume here and make everything go a little crazy with the refractions. So it actually feels like it's really hot and it, you know, refracts the light. So that's on your part now. So that was that. i show you again. Here you can see it up close. And now next thing I will try to, next video I will try to implement it with the Unreal Engine water system here where you can put down the lakes and the rivers so we can have flowing uh, lava rivers and, and uh, lava lakes which could look really good so that's in the other part here if you click on the screen right now so thank you goodbye